Hello, in this presentation I will make a robot classification based on their main features and the elements they contain. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to classify robots according to the main features such as the type of applications for, for which they have been designed to, the working environment in which they move, or their mobility and also their level of intelligence. In addition to this, I will also present their main elements to make robots uh, different from one to each other, such as their mechanical structure, the type of sensors and actuators, as well as the control and power systems. Robots have a mechanical, uh, mechanical structure made up uh, of links and joints. Links are powered by actuators, which in turn are powered by some energy source. All these elements will mainly affect to the robot mobility. Robots have also a, a control system that will process uh, acquired data from sensors and when put it together they will determine a certain degree of intelligence for that robot. Uh, the combination of all these elements will be affected by the application and the environment uh, where the robot works. On the next slide I will carry out a robot classification based on some of their main elements and characteristics, but unfortunately not all the elements or features have been considered for simplicity, but at least I have included the vast majority of them and the ones that I consider the most important ones. There are multiple applications in robotics here I highlight three main areas. This classification is not uh, strictly as I presented here, but this is more or less what I believe that could be uh, classified a robot by their application. Robots are, in use, are used in uh, industrial environments, uh, in applications such as welding, component assembling, painting, object manipulation and machining among others. On the other hand, there is a huge range of applications for non-industrial robots, also known as service robots. And here we can distinguish between professional and domestic use. Uh, in the professional field, we can find robots that are used in tasks such as inspection, maintenance, cleaning, good supply, among others. In the domestic service, robots are used mostly for cleaning, um, healthcare, uh, assistance for elderly people, entertaining and many other th things. Robots can work in multiple environments. Traditionally, we distinguish between structure environments in which all the elements uh, that the robot can interact with are previously known and we have somehow a control over them. So the chances for colliding against them is relatively quite low. Industrial environments using robotic arms are a typical structure environment example. On the other hand, when the robot environment is not fully known or it might change, we refer to this situation as unstructured environments. Clearly, all type of robots that move in a terrestrial, aerial or underwater environments can be considered as or under uh, this consideration of non-structured environments. In structured environments, the vast majority of the elements are usually static, while in unstructured environments we can find situations with static or dynamic environments. Another way to classify robots is through their mobility, that will be conditioned basically to their mechanical structure, the type of actuators and the type of power supply. Obviously the environment and the application will affect too because they provide the overall contacts of the robot or where the robot is, is going to be used. We can distinguish between fixed and mobile robots. Mobile robots can have wheels, legs, a caterpillar chain, etc. Also we can find mobile manipulators which are robotic arms mounted on a mobile base. On the other hand, some robots uh, can have a fixed uh, link attached to the ground or the seal or any other structure and this is the case such as uh, classic robot arms, also parallel robots and correlative robots as you can see here. 
robots can have different degrees of intelligence. There's, there are robots with none or very low intelligence, such as those using teleoperation applications, uh, those that have a fixed or repetitive program, or that they are programmed in a structured environment and their intelligence is very primitive, just basically reacting to small changes of the environment. For instance, also uh, known as reactive robots, they, they usually act as a bug. When then also we have uh, robots with a higher degrees, uh, degree of intelligence, for instance, those that can detect and avoid obstacles and process sensor data in a much more elaborated way. Um, those include elements that may uh, this, the robot uh, save uh, in order to avoid collisions of the environment. Some robots may include also some map building, localization and route optimization uh, routines, among other features, that allow them to work with a semi-structured environment. And of course, there are robots with much higher degree of intelligence that include features such as exploration, simultaneous localization and map buildings or SLAM, motion planning, object manipulation, learning, human robot interaction, among other uh, features. And as you already know, robots have different mechanical structures, uh, so there are some that they have the appearance of a vehicle with a mobile base, uh, such as is uh, the case of some robotic toys, AGVs, which are automated gated vehicles, autonomous vehicles, or UAVs or AUVs, among others. The, this type of robots, uh, they have the main characteristic uh, that they have the ability to move in certain specific environments. For instance, if they have wheels, they will be or they will be able to move in terrain environments, plain terrain environments. Then we have uh, the classic anthropomorphic uh, robot arm, uh, used in, um, in, uh, as a manipulator, and then they have uh, also, for instance, parallel robots, collaborative robots. They are used basically in the industry, as we already mentioned. Their mechanical structure, it's uh, also, there's another robot with a mechanical structure that can be considered as bio-inspired. This uh, includes robots that they look like humans or animals or they try to mimic some uh, of their mobility. These robots can easily move on plain terrain but also on uneven terrain, as is the case of a human robot. For instance, also they can be used uh, to, uh, to work with a human designed tools, so we don't need to adapt the robot for a specific tool, they, we, they can use human tools. Most of actuators used in robotics are direct current and alternating current motors. Depending on the size, speed, torque, power required by the application, we can choose between one or another. In DC motors, we can find brush motors for the ease of changing the direction and speed, or also brushless motors, like the ones used, for instance, in drones. We can also find servo motors that are motors uh, with a position control system. The vast majority of AC motors used in robotics are asynchronous, and they can be motors with a single phase or a three phase uh, motor depending on their, the power demands. In addition of this type of motors, there are other t uh, type of motors such as stepper motors, hydraulics, pneumatic, piezoelectric motors, but comparatively speaking, their use in robotics is much lower than the previous ones. The power supply of a robot can be external or internal, that is, the robot has the power supply incorporated in the second case, in the later case. Depending on the energy consumption needs, a robot with an external power supply can be powered with a single phase, three phase AC current, for instance, or direct current, solar, combustion, among other uh, external power supply systems. Robots with an incorporated power supply will usually work with direct current provided from Richard Table lithium ion 
lipo lithium polymer, lead acid and nickel cadmium batteries, among others. In some cases, robots incorporate non-rechargeable cells and some of them include power banks, which are nothing more than rechargeable batteries but with built-in electronics for charging the battery and also to regulate uh, the voltage regulation to the 5 volts USB standard. Robots can be manually controlled, semi-automatic or fully automatic. In manual control, decisions are only made by the human operator and thus the robot acts as just as a machine to be controlled. Robots with semi-automatic control are used in applications where the decisions are, is, are, are shared. This is also known as shared control. And part of them are taken by the human, but the other decisions are taken by the robot. This is the case, for instance, of ADAS, uh, Advanced Rabbit uh, Assistant Systems, Haptics, Exoskeletons, Prosthetics and Collective Robots. The vast majority of robots, anyway, are operated in automatic mode. This is the case of industrial programmable robots, intelli intelligent vehicles, assistive robots, etc. Sensors in robotics, uh, they play a fundamental aspect because they provide essential information in order to interact with the environment. They can be classified based on their nature or uh, the variable they can measure. If they measure internal variables of the robot, these sensors are known under the name proprioceptive sensor, which is the case of potentiometers, encoders, accelerometers and among others. Sensors used to measure external variables, they are known as exteroceptive sensors. There's a huge uh, variety of sensors using different principle measurements, oh, sorry, measuring principles and the technology uh, they, they are based off. Uh, this is the case, for instance, of lasers, ultrasounds, infrared sensors, but also uh, vision systems, force sensors, uh, satellite-based location systems, etc. Well, in this presentation I've made a general classification of robots in order to provide a broader vision of many types of robots. For a reminder of the course, we will focus on the industrial robots. Thank you.